welcome to the special broadcast on German Chancellor Olaf Scholz's visit to India. He is in India for the seventh intergovernmental consultations between the two countries, that is India and Germany. In a short while from now, Chancellor Scholz will co-chair the seventh intergovernmental consultations with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And we will be joined by experts to talk about the overarching agenda and also deliverables or expected outcomes of Scholz's India visit on this special broadcast. I'm your host. So, uh, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, along with Prime Minister Narendra Modi, will co chair the seventh intergovernmental consultations today. The German Chancellor arrived in New Delhi on Thursday as part of his three day official visit to India. During his visit, the German Chancellor will be co-chairing the 7th Intergovernmental Consultations alongside Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The G IGC is a whole of government framework under which ministers from both sides hold discussions in their respective areas of responsibility and report on the outcome of their deliberations to the Prime Minister and the Chancellor. Both leaders will also address the 18th Asia-Pacific Conference of German Business the German Chancellor will also hold bilateral talks with PM Narendra Modi to discuss enhancing security and defense cooperation between India and Germany, greater opportunities for the mobility of talent, deeper economic cooperation, green and sustainable development partnership and collaboration in the area of emerging and strategic technologies will also be discussed. Discussions will also focus on important regional and global developments. The seventh intergovernmental consultations between India and Germany inks another chapter in the relationship between both the nations that have been established on the basis of mutual trust and democratic principles. As G4 members, both India and Germany have always supported each other's permanent membership in the United Nations Security Council. More in this report. The biennial intergovernmental consultations format that was launched in 2011 expected to have a strong technology focus with the key elements being sustainability and green transition, migration and mobility and technology and innovation. The IGC which is a unique mechanism that India has with Germany. Seventh Intergovernmental Consultations makes comprehensive review of cooperation and identification of new areas of engagement, makes in-depth discussion on collaboration in new and emerging technologies building on the India-Germany vision document. In the run-up to the IGC, German government has also released two important India-centric documents, a dedicated India strategy titled Focus on India and a skilled labor strategy Center Towards India. To enhance their defence relations, there has also been a significant rise in defence engagements over the last few years. German frigate Baden-Württemberg and support ship Frankfurt am Main deployed to the Indo-Pacific from May 2024 will carry out a joint drill with the Indian Navy in India in October. As cumulative FDI from Germany to India was $14.5 billion from April 2000 to December 2023, it makes Germany one of India's most significant partners in the European Union. Whereas more than 2,000 German companies are active in India as per Indo-German Chamber of Commerce. As the third and fifth largest economies respectively, Germany and India share a robust economic and development partnership. These are visuals of uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and uh, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz uh, exchanging a handshake and also discussions taking place between the two leaders on a day. Both India and Germany are hosting the seventh uh, round of IGC uh, consultations, that is intergovernmental consultations between India and Germany. An extremely significant uh, visit uh, in the context of the bilateral partnership between India and Germany. India and Germany have been strategic partners since 2000. So next year would be marking the 25th year of the strategic partnership between the two countries. Also significant is that uh, both leaders will be addressing the 18th Asia-Pacific Conference of German Business, which is uh, an arrangement of sorts that Germany has with the Indo-Pacific region. And besides that, uh, there's a lot to expect in terms of uh, geopolitical challenges and how both uh, the countries uh, plan to meet them in this region and also globally. 
There is expected to be focus on supply chains and diversification, on innovation, technology and cooperation with startups, on offers to the global south and particularly India. Both uh, India and Germany had entered earlier into a green and sustainable development partnership. So a lot of discussion around that is expected to take place. Uh, both India and Germany are celebrating 50 years of science and technology cooperation this year. And under this cooperation, both sides have taken up projects in several areas of emerging and global importance, like their space research, there's artificial intelligence, sustainability, earth and environment sciences, and advanced materials as well. So uh, an extremely significant visit of uh, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz to India. He will be in India for three days. This is a three-day visit and he'll also be going uh, to Goa and uh, that element of the visit is going to be extremely important from the defense and security uh, point of view. Uh, that's uh, important uh, in the sense that uh, uh, both in fact India and Germany have signed many agreements uh, in 2022 when the sixth IGC, the last intergovernmental consultations had taken place in Berlin and uh, the focus was then on green and sustainable development, uh, green hydrogen, solar and renewable energy, agroecology, forest landscape restoration. The most significant outcome then in 2022 was the signing of the Green and Sustainable Development Partnership and under this partnership the German side has committed to provide new and additional funding of 10 billion euros to India to achieve Paris Climate Goals and SDGs. So the biennial IGC format was launched in 2011 and it allows for a comprehensive review of cooperation and identification of new areas of engagement at the cabinet level and India is among a select group of countries with which Germany has such a mechanism. And like we've been telling you, India was among the first countries to establish diplomatic ties with Germany after the Second World War. And in 2021, India and Germany marked the 70th year of establishment of the diplomatic relations. Since May 2000, India and Germany have had a strategic partnership. Also, in the last two years alone, both leaders have met six times. So this is their seventh meeting in two years. The latest interaction before this was held on the sidelines of the G7 summit in Apulia in Italy in June when the two leaders had briefly met. They'd also met on the sidelines of the G20 summit in New Delhi last year and they discussed cooperation in areas like defense, green and sustainable development. The visit of the German Chancellor uh, is also being uh, seen as an attempt to look at how economically there could be other alternatives like the China plus one format that various countries are looking at for greater trade diversification and for greater resilience and diversification of uh, supply chains. Let's get perspective now on the visit of the German Chancellor to India. Joining us are special guests uh, with us uh, this afternoon, Ambassador Gurjeet Singh, former Indian ambassador to Germany is joining us uh, and uh, also Tobias Scholz, he is the associate at uh, uh, he is joining us, in fact, from Berlin. He is the associate at the German Institute for International and Security Affairs in Berlin. And uh, joining us also in the studio is Professor Ummu Salma Bhava. She is uh, with the School of International Studies, JNU. Such a pleasure to have the three of you here, distinguished panelists on uh, DD India. Ambassador, I'll begin with you. We've seen that uh, this is one relationship that has been going from strength to strength. There has been so much focus on high technology uh, uh, domains and there's also a lot of focus on uh, sustainable uh, uh, partnership. So what do you think uh, could be the biggest focus uh, this time around during the visit of the German Chancellor? Thank you for having me. I think uh, Germany's importance mutually to India has increased by leaps and bounds. Not only did Prime Minister Modi have a great relationship with Angela Merkel, his relationship with Olaf Scholz, who he didn't know too well, is actually like a house on fire. You see their body language. Excellent. Second, despite Germany's preoccupations with the Ukraine crisis and its own domestic economic problems, their vision to engage India is very clear. In 2022, the launch of the $10 billion sustainability partnership, the willingness to take it to third countries, and now to carry, fulfill the promise of a migration and mobility pact, I think are extremely important functional issues which have strategic impact. 
Finally, I think India and Germany provide a good basis for multipolarity in a world which is increasingly becoming bipolar. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll take that forward with Mr. Scholz joining us from Berlin. Mr. Scholz, to your mind, why is this visit significant? Yeah, this visit is significant not only because it is the seven uh, government consultations between Germany and India, which shows that both countries have been taking this forward for quite some time now. It is mostly significant because of the strategic depth and the strategic alignment that uh, both countries are seeing in this bilateral partnership. Both Germany and India in recent years have seen increasing geopolitical risks in their respective neighborhoods and they have realized that they need each other and that they need to understand each other better first and foremost to deepen this relationship with each other. And um, the, the doubts that were there before 2020, before the Galwan crisis uh, for India, uh, before um, Russia's aggressive invasion into Ukraine in 2022, these doubts have uh, given way for more optimistic and uh, for more pro-engagement um, kind of view, both in New Delhi and in Berlin, vis-a-vis -vis the other partner. Okay. Uh, Professor? Your thoughts on the importance of the visit of the German Chancellor to India? So I think um, uh, adding to what the colleagues have said, let me say that, uh, you know, it's, uh, <coughs> sorry, um, we're coming up to 25 years of a strategic partnership. And in these 25 years, the world has dramatically shifted from 2000, when uh, India and Germany signed a strategic partnership. More importantly, in the backdrop of uh, two wars, one in Europe, one in uh, West Asia, oblique Middle East, I think there's a new geopolitical compulsion, which is making both Germany and India strengthen and expand the nature of their engagement at the political, economic, but most importantly, adding a very, very major thrust in defense and security partnership. Hmm. And that is reaffirmed by the two documents which have come out, the India Focus document, which is the first of its kind, yes. which has come out from Germany ever. They just put out a year back a China strategy. It's interesting, isn't it? Because it's solely focused on India and this is the first time, like you said, that they've come up with it. Uh, doesn't it show that uh, India is increasingly important in uh, Germany's scheme of things, its foreign policy and even domestic outlook? I think uh, extremely important because uh, when you bring out a single country focused document, it, I think it talks to you about the um, addressing the shifting landscape, uh, repositioning your political priorities for engagement, and making your partnership more visible, adding content, and transformative. So I think there is, uh, uh, you know, um, it's a quantum shift which is happening in the Indo-German um, partnership, as we see. Um, uh, it, it did, uh, you know, you, you find that irritations will appear because there is no relationship which you can insulate from what is happening around you at the geopolitical and geoeconomic level. Mm. I think it speaks to the strength of the partnership that, uh, you know, we have covered that distance. And today we are on uh, the anvil of some major breakthroughs which will be happening later today as both the prime ministers will meet. Right. Uh, let's uh, pick up... Uh the various sectors of cooperation now. Let's uh, come to defense and security. We are aware, Ambassador, that uh, Chancellor Scholz will be going to Goa and there uh, the German naval frigate uh, Baden-Württemberg and combat support ship Frankfurt am Main will be making a scheduled port call as part of Germany's Indo-Pacific deployment. We know that uh, Germany came up with its Indo-Pacific vision a few years back and India, of course, uh, has been extremely proactive when it comes to development uh, and its own vision, which is Sagar for the Indo-Pacific. And there are various uh, sub-elements uh, that are reflected in the Quad and uh, various other partnerships with ASEAN, etc. Uh, how significant uh, is uh, this in the context of the Indo-Pacific, the security and uh, defense cooperation between India and Germany? I cannot hear you clearly, sir. As a symbol and a manifestation, it is very good. But in reality, there are many weaknesses still. For instance, the German Navy and armed forces are really small. 
So what impact they will have in the Indo-Pacific is extremely limited, unlike, say, the French. But the fact that they are now coming regularly and engaging India, I think, shows intent, which I welcome. The Indo-Pacific guidelines were much weaker than the India strategy which has now come up. Therefore, I welcome the India strategy in which there is a whole section on defense, which is very good. But in defense, in reality, we want more support for technology transfer and defense production in India. Now, that is where the pending project of the submarines comes in, engines for aircraft and tanks come in, export licenses for small arms come in. And all these are not exactly moving smoothly. And I think that is where the rub lies. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Scholz, so do you agree that uh, it is time to think uh, ahead in terms of our uh, defense and security partnership, look at cooperation in uh, strategic technology? Yeah, I guess the, the one big issue that, that this relationship is facing in this regard is that the ecosystem beyond governments is still on the rise. So while the governments have realized in recent years that the bilateral partnership is becoming an increasingly important, um, businesses, um, uh, big businesses as, as well as medium-sized uh, businesses still have to understand what it means to partner with businesses of, of the other country. And I think this is why it is important that the government consultations are taking place at the same time as the Asia-Pacific Conference yes. um, of the German uh, economy. German businesses and um, because because this helps us to kind of like create more mutual understanding of how co-production could look like of how how co-development co-innovation um, could look like in the future because the realization on, on government level is there but it will take more than the governments to take this partnership uh, forward in the future. Hmm. What are your expectations? Uh, do you think that the uh, APK conference that is happening is going to touch upon this as well? Because there are four or five uh, focus areas and geopolitical challenges, diversification of supply chains are a couple of you know, those focus areas in uh, this conference. So do you think that this could uh, go into the realm of what the ambassador was saying that you, know, you could look at engines, technology, etc.? So I think um, because we are taking a big uh, step forward in the uh, security and defense partnership, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's a uh, government to government understanding about revitalizing or transforming the relationship. Ultimately, the work has to happen at the level of business. And so when you read what is the evidence on the ground, the fact that the 18th Asia Pacific Conference is taking place here in Delhi, there are more than, uh, you know, almost 800 CEOs of large companies small and medium sized as well taking part. Uh, I think that is indicative of the mood of business. Hmm. Otherwise for business to come in such large numbers, it's not just uh, uh, an annual jamboree I think one should look at, hmm. but one has to look at how already defense companies have already had a meeting with each other. And this is about intentionality and putting uh, that element, uh, as Tobias was pointing out, you know, um, uh, co-designing, co-development, production, research and innovation is being supported. So it has to bring business, industry, academia together and you can clearly see that convergence uh, happening. Mm. So I'm quite optimistic that uh, we will see with the meeting today, both where uh, both the Chancellor and Prime Minister are going to address the Asia Pacific Conference uh, later in a short while, that that will also signal how both sides will facilitate in business to business uh, improving and we will see more deliverables coming through on that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's uh, look at the trade and economic relationship ambassador. As the third and fifth largest economies respectively, Germany and India, they have a robust economic and development partnership. Germany is India's largest trading partner in the EU and our trade touched an all-time high of $33 billion in 2023, a rise of 5%. But would you say there is a lot of potential going forward and under the framework of the India-EU, FTA talks uh, a lot more could happen? Now, this is a huge question between the ideas and the reality. Now, as Mr. Scholl said, that the governments are on one page, that we need to move forward. But 
Germany is not run only by its government. It is run by business, civil society, the states, and uh, many other things. All of them are not yet on the same India gung ho page as Berlin. So much work needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am very happy that the Asia Pacific Conference is taking place in India. But every two years it takes place in some Asian country. In its trail, it has not exactly left a glorious record of new German investment. So, I would like that conference to do two things. One, to accept Indo-Pacific rather than Asia-Pacific as a concept. Mm -hmm. And secondly, to encourage German companies to invest more in India. This is what the Japanese do. They say, okay, I, we are going to put $4 billion in the next five years. We don't hear that from German business. And I think this is where Mr. Tobias shows was right. The German business so far is far more preoccupied with China, despite German government looking at China plus one policy. And that is the problem. Now our trade, you're, you're showing here, $14.5 billion. $14.5 billion, despite no India-EU FTA. India-EU FTA doesn't look like happening soon. Hmm. And I don't see Berlin putting much pressure in Brussels to make it happen. So therefore, I think we should work with close partners like Germany to expand our trade and FTI. And if the FTA happens, so be it. Hmm, interesting, you are saying that uh, Germany should uh, put its uh, weight uh, on uh, ensuring that negotiations uh, are fast-tracked and concluded at the earliest, a similar expectation that we have from France. Well, uh, we'll uh, come back to the areas of cooperation and there's a lot more to discuss in terms of development cooperation, science and technology cooperation, in terms of uh, triangular cooperation or cooperation in third countries between India and Germany, what form could the climate and uh, sustainable development partnership take going forward. But before that, uh, in a short while from now, uh, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz uh, is uh, set to address the 18th Asia-Pacific Conference of German Business along with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The APK is a biennial event for business leaders, executives and political representatives from Germany and countries in the Indo-Pacific. And it is expected to give a further fillip to trade and investment ties between the two countries, a point we were discussing on, uh, recently. Also, more than uh, 600 top business leaders and CEOs from Germany, India and other countries are participating as uh, Asia Pacific Conference of German Business provides a platform to discuss business mega trends. The key points of the APK program include uh, geopolitical challenges as one focus area, another focus area is supply chains and diversification. Third focus area is innovation, technology and cooperation with startups. Fourth is offers to the global south and the fifth one is India Night which is focus on India. So APK is an effective platform to promote India as a preferred destination for German investors. The conference provides a unique opportunity for companies from India to engage in dialogue with representatives from around 500 German companies. Germany, in fact, had participated as a partner country in reimbursed uh, 2024 conference and both sides had launched the Indo-German platform for investments in renewable energies globally at reinvest 2024 conference. So this is uh, the overall milieu as far as uh, the economic and business ties between India and Germany are concerned. At the panel discussion of the 18th Asia-Pacific Conference, India's Minister for Commerce and Industry, Piyush Goel, has said that India is this country where reforms, resilience and readiness for the future is available for the world. For the next 30 years, India has a path laid out in which we are going to grow our economy from our current level to at least 10x what we are today, from 3.5 trillion to about 30, 35 trillion dollars. We also have the advantage of democracy, which many other countries in this region do not have. We provide the rule of law, we provide safety, we provide comfort to investors, to businesses, 
and from India, no wealth creator or businessman will disappear overnight to come back as a professor in a university in Japan. And that heady cocktail of democracy, the demographic dividend and demand that comes out of uh, uh, emerging economy like India provides an excellent opportunity where I believe an India-EU deeper engagement, possibly an FTA, will benefit both sides. Exactly the point that we were making that India and Germany could collaborate to fast track discussions under the India EU FTA framework or free trade agreement framework. Well, uh, Piyush Goyal also said that India is poised to become the third largest economy in the next three years. India has a strong macroeconomic foundation. The fundamentals of the economy are strong. We are building infrastructure at a never seen before pace. And therefore, we are in a sweet spot where reform, resilience and readiness for the future is available for businesses from across the world. India becomes the world's third largest economy in the next three years. So in three years, India is projected to be the third largest economy. Besides that, Vice Chancellor of Germany, uh, Robert Habeck, has said that Germany and India must respond together to global challenges and called India as the most important country in the Asia-Pacific region and the world for Germany. The point that Ambassador was making earlier was that whether there will be an acceptance of the term Indo-Pacific now ahead of uh, what we've already been talking about, the Asia-Pacific region, whether that uh, term will be accepted by Germany. Listen in together on finding right answers to climate neutrality or improving our competitiveness or mitigating complex risks and building new resilience. The Indo-Pacific region holds the key to many to these questions. It is the world's most dynamic economic area. It has the most people. It has the fastest economic growth and the fastest growing middle classes. It is home to the most important trading routes. So the term Indo-Pacific has already seeped into the terminology like you heard there. Also the global CEO of Seaman uh, Roland uh, Bush has said that focus must be on building necessary ecosystems, local ecosystems uh, to foster growth in high-end manufacturing. Economic development comes normally in waves. It first starts with energy, followed by infrastructure, then comes manufacturing and finally things like higher education or the healthcare sector. In recent years, in India and throughout the ASEAN region, there have been investments in energy and infrastructure. Now, the focus is on expanding manufacturing capacities, adding more local value added. This is very important because emerging market countries need to continuously create more and high quality jobs. Right, uh, and Professor Bava continues to be with us in the studio. Professor, I was looking at the areas where uh, Indian investments have taken place in Germany, and there are sectors like IT, automotive, pharmaceuticals, biotechnology and manufacturing, and we heard him say about how the focus increasingly has to be on manufacturing and ensuring more local content there. When do you think a tipping point could come and what is really needed? Is it political will that is going to make it happen and will it be incremental like it is? Like in, in the case of Japan, we've seen that, you know, over the decades we've seen a lot of momentum. So, do you think that there is this political will to take it to that tipping point and beyond? I would definitely say that there is a lot of political will um, to, you know, um, refashion the engagement between India and Germany. Uh, we, it's, Germany has been our classical trade partner. Uh, it, we've seen the business grow over there. But you've got to ask, like, how is the shifting geopolitical impulses, uh, you know, adding a new push to it to, uh, you know, kind of put an attention on manufacturing? Because I think this is very uh, importantly connected with what came out of the pandemic and the uh, dependence on the single supply chain. Yes, and there's a second China trade shock also which also, the world is facing. Right. So, you know, I think there is these new impulses which are making both sides revisit, okay, how is it that we, you know, it cannot just be an ordinary kind of it. In the India Focus document also, you know, it talks about a new perspective on India. 
and that new perspective means a very different perception about India. So, India not only being, uh, you know, um, inward investment flow where make in India happens, but India also partnering with Germany to make in Germany as well. So, I think that yes. is something which is a, a more transformative element we will see and then, you know, yes, business will have to follow through. Yes, we remember that make in through. India, India had launched in Germany. Right. <laughs> so, we will have to take it through in the sense about how do we now take it beyond this and, and I think the document makes for a good reading where they want to bring all stakeholders together to really uh, co-design, co-develop and co-produce. Hmm. I think that is where we will see some of it happen. Uh, we will have to look at how any kind of the bees, uh, ease of doing business in India has improved, uh, you know, big push in infrastructure happening. Uh, the political um, uh, support is there to make, uh, make that come uh, and happen. I think now business will have to now talk to each other to, you know, transform that vision into a uh, economic reality and I think that's where some more work uh, mm. will perhaps need to be done. Okay, uh, so uh, let's now talk about uh, the science and technology uh, cooperation between uh, India and Germany. Mr. Scholz, if I may come to you on that, uh, this year is marking 50th anniversary of the Indo-German S&T cooperation and there are a number of fields where it is expected that cooperation will uh, go further because uh, it is expected that you know uh, on issues like the AI for instance and space research uh, there could be focus going forward. Uh, how exciting has this be space been to your mind and can this become more exciting in the years to come? Yeah to be to be very frank here I think um, it, it hasn't this space hasn't been growing too much in the past years but I think we are um, we're definitely poised to see more cooperation in this area going forward. So, so it will become uh, more exciting um, to, to take up your words. Um, the partnership on technologies was was hurdled a lot by the issues that that we have been discussing in, in the past half an hour here. That um, businesses in India and Germany did not exactly know how to talk to each other about the same thing. And let me just take the example of uh, digital public infrastructure here, which is something that India has been pushing a lot in the past years um, as something, um, as, as, as some technology layer that, that India can contribute to the world, where India can partner with. Um, just, just the elements that India focused on with DPIs, with digital public infrastructure in the past years, have been so specific to India that it was very difficult for the German government, for German businesses to understand what its benefit can be um, in, uh, in, in Germany.